We are looking at a group of visitors who are on the way to the bridge over the gorge where the falls drops some 70 feet in a spectacular display of water power. But today we will focus our attention away from the falls and toward the city of Patterson that surrounds the Patterson Great Falls National Historical Park. We draw your attention to a clock tower that you can see popping up above the trees. Patterson does not have a skyline, but there are a number of multi-story buildings whose upper floors are visible from many parts of the park. Many of the buildings are factories, but a careful look will find a few church steeples, the dome of the Passaic County Courthouse, and the clock tower of Patterson City Hall. You can see the clock tower from much of town. It is harder to see in summer with the trees in full leaf. But in the fall and winter, you can see the clock tower easily from most of the park. So from Mary Ellen Kramer Park, from the Upper Raceway, and if you walk up Stony Road Trail, you'll get a great view of much of the center of town. Now let's show a few seconds of the City Hall as most Pattersonians see it. Located in the heart of the historic business district at 155 Market Street, Patterson's City Hall is at the economic heart of the city. Auto and bus traffic can be heavy, and if you want to stop by for a closer look, parking is at a premium. Constructed in 1893, it was designed by the firm of Carrere and Hastings, which was one of the most important American architectural firms working in the Beaux-Arts tradition. Among their major works was the New York Public Library's main branch in New York City. Their design for Patterson was inspired by the design of the Hotel de Ville in Lyon, France. Patterson was, of course, America's silk city, and Lyon was at the heart of European silk manufacturing. Among our images is a plaque marking the completion. Two mayors are listed, Mayor Thomas Beveridge and Mayor Christian Braun. If you would like to add a visit to City Hall to your trip to the Falls, it is only a half mile away when you leave Overlook Park, go to Spruce Street, drive down, turn left at Market Street, and keep driving. In about a half mile, City Hall will be on the left. Featured prominently in front are bronze statues of three prominent men from Patterson's historic era. And note, there are no statues of prominent Patterson women. At the center is a bronze of Garrett Hobart, a corporate attorney who became vice president of the United States under Republican William McKinley. Hobart died in office, making room for McKinley to appoint Theodore Roosevelt as his vice president for a second term. Of course, tragedy lifted Roosevelt into the presidency. Next, we have a bronze of Nathan Barnard. Barnard was an immigrant from Prussia who became a wealthy property owner and philanthropist. He became mayor in 1883. The third bronze is of Andrew McBride. McBride was born in Patterson to Irish immigrant parents. He became a physician and in 1908 became mayor of Patterson. He was mayor during the 1913 silk strike. In 1902, the Great Fire destroyed much of Patterson's commercial district, including City Hall. The fire left but a burnt-out shell. Patterson was able to rebuild and proudly did so with its own money. The City Hall was rebuilt and a plaque marks the completion. Though we are staying with City Hall, we have a few seconds of a video showing Main Street in the portion closest to City Hall. Main Street was also destroyed in the fire and was rebuilt using an updated fire code and the most modern materials. Though much has changed over the past 118 years, a careful viewer can see the elegance and grace that characterized Main Street. Returning to City Hall, we are back to the entrance, with features groin vaulting as a decorative element. 
Though City Hall is a public building, access to the upper floors is by appointment. Our access was arranged through a city official. The building itself is a work of art, but there are also artworks on view on most of the walls, including inside the mayor's office and in the city council chambers. Most of the artwork honors former mayors, but we also saw portraits of founder Alexander Hamilton and William Patterson, the governor who approved the SUM's corporation. Among the artists whose work is on view is Gaetano Federici, Patterson's sculptor for much of the first half of the 20th century. One stained glass window honors silk pioneer and former mayor John Ryle. Even Larry Doby gets a shout out with a large photograph in the city council chambers. The Patterson Great Falls is honored too, including by a large photograph in the mayor's office. Our last two images show Mayor Saya and Congressman Pasquale seen together in a joint image. The second shows Bill Pasquale when he was mayor from 1990 to 1996. And with that, we conclude. I hope this was helpful.